Hello, and welcome to another Cloud Podcast, a podcast designed to bring you stories from the smartest minds in IT, operations, and business, and learn how they're using cloud technology to improve business and customer experience. All right, well, welcome to another Cloud Podcast. I'm excited today because we have some old friends on, on with us this afternoon, this morning, whichever you are listening to. But we have Jimmy Reardon. He is now with Google as the partner services working with Chrome OS. Jimmy, welcome to the program, I'm in. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Thanks, already for having us on. Excited to talk to you guys today. It's been been a while. It lots, has been. It has been. So partner manager, Chrome OS. And now we have Saj Sani. Good to see you, buddy. And nice, nice to meet you and have you on the show as well. Uh, and you're with, you're with Google and been there for quite a while now, right? Yeah, yeah thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I guess I'm a, I'm a veteran. I'm uh, going on a little bit over seven years here yeah. at, at Google, working on Chrome OS and uh, working with Jimmy to tackle this call center space. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got actually, me yeah. by a lot. Yeah, I've only only been there for two two months. Hopefully, I get to as long as Saj has been at Google for sure. That's right. Jimmy's a little green, but you do have a lot of experience in the contact center arena and have helped us with some projects in the past as well but already not to forget yeah. you buddy with your taps behind you good to have you on yeah thanks again for having me on as a co-host um alex and jimmy and saj thanks for coming on um looking forward to talking a little bit about google and and how it can help out the contact center so i'm just gonna jump right in i'm gonna jimmy yeah. i'm gonna put you on the spot first tell us a little bit about yeah what you guys do at Google and, you know, talk a little bit about how you guys are leveraging technology, not only physical hardware and, and uh, software and, and the cloud to help contact center professionals. So I'll let you kind of tee it up. Yeah. So, yeah, as you guys know, I was at Vonage for almost five years, been in the cloud communications, you know, you see contact center space for a little over 13 years um, and got super excited because, you know, I found this role at Google where I was like, I, I never could find the right fit where I would just be like, yeah, that's the perfect role for me to be able to work at an amazing company like Google, right? And uh, they, ca I came across this opportunity, this role for uh, building out a contact center channel partner program for the Chrome OS team and immediately jumped on it and uh, joined the company a couple months ago. And and what we're building here is um, basically, you know, the Chrome OS has really tackled the higher ed, the, you know, the, the high schools, colleges, universities, every student now really is getting a Chromebook. These, um, you know, these universities and colleges are deploying Chrome uh, Enterprise, which is the management, uh, the, you know, software management platform for Chrome OS. Um, so they really tackled that segment that you know segment of the market and now they really want to start looking at mid-market enterprise customers and there's a few routes to market to really get our foot in the door and one of which is contact center you know ever since mm -hmm. covid uh they've seen a real a big uptick in interest in chromebooks for these remote or hybrid contact center agents supervisors admins and um they decided to really go you know and invest a ton in that segment and what they're doing now is, or what they have done is uh, at the end of September, they launched something called Chrome Enterprise Recommended or CER program for contact center. So these are seven or eight, I forget off the top of my head, contact center solutions providers that are Chrome Enterprise Recommended. So they've been thoroughly tested by our team. Um, they've been, you know, all the bugs have been worked out, optimized for call quality, core functionality, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so Vonage, my former company, Eight by eight, Ring Central, uh, uh, Five Nine, Genesis, Cisco, and Edify are all on there, and I think Citrix, right, Saj, from a VDI perspective. Um, and now, what my role is, and what Saj's role, you know, is here, um, is the go-to-market strategy for Chrome OS in the contact center space. So we're really going to start building a telecom channel program with the typical you know, masters or technology solutions yeah. brokers, as well as you know, the sub agents or those you know, channel partners. Yeah, it's absolutely the way to go, right? And it's, it's, it's cool to see how much the landscape has changed with some of these bigger players like, you know, getting into it and to see Google pushing hard into, into the contact center, into this telecom space and seeing the value of 
the mid market, I'll call it enterprise light type customers and some of the best ways to get in there is through, the ch- through the channel. That's where the relationships mm-hmm. are. And as you know, you know, th- from your time at Vonage, you know, all the deals come in through the agents typically versus just going out there and banging down doors on your, on your own. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, I've, I was always in, in the channel at my previous company, Stage 2 Networks, before I went to Vonage. That was, you know, I built a channel program there um, and, you know, kind of ran sales and account management and channel and marketing towards the end of my tenure year there. And then I came to Vonage where when I initially went to Vonage, it was a much more direct sales model, you know, knocking on doors, making, you know, your, your cold calls every morning, all that kind of stuff. And I managed a team doing that. And slowly but surely, as I moved into more of an individual contributor role, um, I made that pivot to, you know, back to the channel as, as fast as I could um, because I knew that was you know, where I really shined is working with the channel, building relationships and you know, being you know, a you know, subject matter expert for these channel partners when it came to UC and contact center. Um, so now I'm trying to be that SME for Chrome OS Chromebooks. Yeah. Absolutely. So give us an idea. So you're, you started two months ago. Are you completely starting fresh with the channel program? You're the one to talk to, to get these masters on board. Well, well, Saj will back me up here. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, educating internally about what the telecom channel is and these, you know, technology solutions, brokers, these channel uh, partners, you know, sub agents, whatever you, know, you want to call them these days. Um, and we went to Channel Partners uh, Expo uh, a couple months ago or a month ago. Yep. And uh, Saj, I mean, maybe you can back me up here on, uh, you know, not the shock to the system, but, <laughs> you know, the learning that's been happening at Google when it comes to the telecom channel. Yeah, I, I have to say the, the learning for me personally being new to this space has been uh, insane. Uh, you know, for me being in a traditional IT channel uh, for the last, you know, five years or so, and seeing how the telecom channel works is I've just learned so much, you know, like mm-hmm. where the deals happen, who brings in the, you know, you know, what I call channel um, on my world is, is very different from what you call a channel in terms of your reseller. So uh, yeah. it's been great. And then also taking our learnings and packing, patching it up and going to our product team and saying, Hey, you know, we got to approach this differently because the way we do Chrome traditionally, we got to tailor it a little bit differently for the telecom channel so they can adapt to it as well. And also, you know, where, where does the endpoint come in? I think that's also what we're learning. I'm trying to figure out where we can wrap the endpoint around um, in the space. Yeah. I mean, our, our typical go-to-market strategy, the different channels that we have uh, are, are OEMs. So like HP, Samsung, Lenovo, Acer. Uh, and then we have our distribu- uh, distributors, our DISTs, like TD Cinex, Ingram Micro. And then we have our national sales partners, our resellers, our VARs. So, you know, to start working with, you know, the Intellisys of the world or the AppSmarts or the TVIs, um, it's, a, it's a different kind of go-to-market strategy and incentive program. So that's the, really what I've been building out. And uh, hopefully next month uh, we'll be launching with uh, one, two, possibly three technology solutions brokers, um, a, a new incentive program to pair Chromebooks. And Chrome Enterprise Upgrade, that's the, uh, that's the management license, the software license to pair with the Chromebooks mm-hmm. um, and with a contact center. So pairing that with a contact center, we're going to incentivize the telecom channel uh, to do that, to really start displacing the Windows and uh, Mac devices. Yeah, and yeah. Let's, let's talk a little bit about um, how this, I mean, because not a lot of people listening to this podcast can envision you know, their agents, because we, we think of contact center agents as they come into the office, they're in a cubicle, you know, they have the desktop or the single monitor, or maybe they have a laptop, but it's a hand-me-down laptop that like, you know, probably needs to be refreshed because it's seven, eight, nine years old. And uh, IT is going in there and they're configuring all sorts of security things and locking it down. And, you know, and then we had to get, we had the pandemic and we moved a lot of those BPO workers or even just contact center workers to work from home. And now yeah. there's the strategy of maybe I don't need a physical center. Maybe I can just hire 20 or 30 people distributed around anywhere, the globe or the U S or whatever I feel comfortable with. And maybe I should just send them a care package when I onboard them like monitor, keyboard, mouse, a Chromebook and, you know, maybe a wireless headset or a Bluetooth headset or something like that to attach it. So 
talk to us a little bit about um what that's like you know you guys have the chromebook but you also have chrome os you also have these apps that uh are working with key players in the the contact center market so how are you guys pushing this forward like what paint paint a little bit of a picture for the viewers that aren't quite there yet but maybe want to be there in the near you know next six months to a year Sure. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll answer as the sales guy and then and Saj can back me up as the technical uh, resource here. But, yeah, I think what a lot of businesses and you know, a lot of enterprises have really seen throughout COVID is from a security perspective is growing threats with like ransomware, phishing, employee errors. Um, so one thing that the Chromebooks mitigate is the security concerns, you know, zero reported ransomware attacks ever. So right out of the gate, a more secure type of solution to deploy for your contact center, specifically for those your remote or hybrid folks. Um, and then, you know, the majority of these contact center applications, especially when I was at Vonage, they are optimized and typically work for a Chrome browser. You know, they're a Chrome browser plugin, WebRTC ready type of contact center solutions, whether it's a 5.9, Vonage 8x8. So optimizing them for the entire, you know, Chromebook and Chrome OS um, is really beneficial because a lot of these agents already are using Chrome. Um, and now it's just building an OS off of Chrome. Um, so now mm -hmm. they don't have to deal with the struggles and the complexities of like legacy endpoints not being uh, adaptable or flexible or, or easy to use. Um, you know, and then from an onboarding perspective, you kind of hit it on, on the head. It's, it's plug and play. It's contact center agent in a box. They deploy and manage uh, you know, even faster and even with high turnover, which is, you know, happens a lot in contact center, um, you can deploy a Chromebook or, you know, Chrome OS 76% faster than a Windows 10 device. So whether it's a new agent or you're wiping the device and sending it to, um, you know, to another agent that just uh, joined the company, um, I think that the IT organizations and the contact center organizations are really going to love it. Saj? Yeah, um, is, there's a lot of cool things that a Chromebook can do that agent in a box. I, I love that idea. You know, mm -hmm. we have some pretty cool technology where we have zero touch. So imagine an IT admin just procures a whole bunch of devices, drop ships them, the agent opens up the device, and it, it'll just configure itself. Uh, obviously, that's overly simplistic, but all the, all the apps um, are optimized for the browser, as Jimmy mentioned. And then the admins have the ability to kind of curate that, you know, lock it down, make it even further. You know, uh, you kind of mentioned everyone is home. Um, a Chromebook also allows you to kind of not have to troubleshoot, you know, someone else's network, right? You just hook it up, turn on the Wi-Fi, and off you go, and the Chromebook is working right then and there. Security, from a security set point of view, um, I always say look at a Chromebook as multiple layers. Like the minute you open up that device, it's already encrypted. The browser has, you know, tons of AI and encryption and all the Google stuff working in the background. Uh, you try to go to a you know a bum website, you know you see that little red exclamation point will save you from going to a site to prevent phishing. It's a lot of cool things running behind the scenes that typically you would have to you know manage with a massive image. You know you, and now that you're a cloud OS, you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about that. It's all all policy based. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole paradigm shift in how you manage um, you know an end user. And God forbid an end user is working from home, you know, and the computer goes down. What are they going to do, right? With the Chromebook, a couple of keystrokes. You wipe it and you back up. Your backup are running probably within you know eight to ten minutes, maybe less. Where in a traditional sense, you might be down a day or two. Ship that device out, get another one. It takes a while. So uh, we've done a lot of cool things where it just you know really works well in the space. And and one thing I would add there, um, yeah, just for those folks that maybe aren't as educated about Chromebooks, they think. Oh, this is Google only. You have to be you know Google Workspace or formerly G Suite. Uh, you know, G Suite customer, and you can only use Google, you know, Docs and Google Meet and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would say right out of the uh, right out of the gate that you, you know that's not going to be the case. And the majority of these agents are working out of browser-based uh, applications, like a Salesforce, like a ServiceNow, mm -hmm. like a Zendesk. So all of their applications that they're typically using, whether it's Office 365, which again is web-based with all of your different tools and um, you know. Uh, Microsoft Teams and everything like that, you don't have to worry about those issues. And, and um, you know, Saj, back me up here, but a lot of our customers are, you know, not Google Workspace customers. They're Office 365, you know, Microsoft Teams customers. 
Yeah, you know, a, a lot of customers have gone cloud, right? They use Azure Active Directory. They use, you know, Office 365, which are all web-based. So you just log yeah. right in and off you go, right? And we, the, the Chromebooks have some pretty cool features in the back where you can use your existing infrastructure and log into a Chromebook, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, everything that's web, we can log into a Chromebook, no problem. Yeah, you I mean, go ahead, you guys, you, guys are, uh, you guys are most likely on Chromebooks right now, and we're recording this on, on Zoom. So... Yep. Think about uh, college kids, you know, with their Chromebooks. Yep. They need access to all of those about, about, uh, uh, web-based tools as well, you know, Teams, Slack, uh, all those other things. Sorry, Alex, I cut you off. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like, give us, uh, like, a couple examples of, like, use cases outside of education and, or higher ed where you see the Chromebooks really making a big splash. You know, maybe it's healthcare, maybe it's finance or something like that. Do you have any you know, success stories where you see, yeah, this has really helped out a certain group. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. Healthcare yeah. is probably the number one. We see clinician devices. Mm -hmm. uh, you see patient devices as they come in. Um, think of, you know, when a customer walks in or a patient walks in and they check into a, a, a hospital or a faci you know, facility, that kiosk is probably powered by Chrome or something of Chrome. Um, you know, like, for example, I, uh, my dad just had knee surgery not too long ago, and he was using a Chromebook to access his email and, and watch movies. Uh, that the hospital gave him, right? So that's one major use case. Um, on the retail side, point of sale systems, you know, lockdown kiosk mode, all that device does is just point of sale or it does inventory checks. Uh, so it's locked down and curated to only do one or two separate things. Um, I can probably go on and on. Uh, one, one of my favorites that we have publicly listed is Charles Schwab. You go into Charles Schwab Bank, mm -hmm. you want to go check your account, want to go open an account. Um, it's meant to only do those, you know, few things. So finance, retail, healthcare, um, are probably the big ones that we see consistent uh, traction in. And it's not just yeah. the Chromebooks, right? Yeah, we're, I'm working off of a Chromebook right now, but we also have Chrome boxes, which is a replacement for you know a typical um, desktop uh, server kind of setup, as well as Chrome bases, which are you know ideally you know an all-in-one screen, you know, meant for like a kiosk or something like that, like uh, like Saj mentioned. So there's not, you know, there's a lot of different options. And when and when people are thinking about Chromebooks, they typically think about oh, those cheap two hundred dollar laptops we can get from Best Buy or Walmart or whatever. Um, there are some really robust and beautiful looking Chromebooks. Like the one I'm using right now is an HP device, um, and it looks exactly like those you know, MacBooks that you would get or, or whatever that everybody's so obsessed with. There's a wide range of devices specifically you know, curated for different verticals, different workers. Um, so everything from a Chromebook to a Chromebook, a Chromebook to a Chromebox to a Chromebase. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I like about it is it's going to one company for not only the hardware, um, you know, the, the laptop or the device, the personal device, but also for the OS system behind it, um, which, you know, if you think of the traditional IT world, you have to get the physical hardware. You got to, you know, clean them all out, get everything off of it, reprogram it, lock it down, uh, put the operating system on. All, you know, all of that is a lot of work for an IT department. So if you're a small contact center and you need to get up fast, up and going fast, and you don't have the IT resource resources that maybe a larger contact center has, you can go to Google and, and really get that done. So that's that's what I really love about that. Yeah. And, you know, for the channel, you know, just bringing it back to you, know, obviously, there's a lot of benefits for the customer, right? But for the channel, you know, there's there's some challenges that we're seeing that, you know, partnering with Google and Chrome OS can really uh, can really solve. Right. So the first is the loss of hardware revenue. Traditionally, you know, the telecom channel have sold, you know, IP endpoints, whether it's a Polycom, Yaylink, Cisco, Grandstream, some type of device. Well, for the contact center, that's 100 percent going away. And. You know, and typically for the the back office worker or the knowledge worker, uh, they're really not using physical phones anymore as well. It's all software driven. So nobody's buying or renting mm -hmm. Polycom phones from, you know, from Avonage or Ring Central, and that affects the channel's revenue. Um, so a high percentage of those customers are opting for soft phones. I would say I probably sold in my last year of Vonage maybe one or two deals where they, they got devices. And I mean, Alex, yeah. you've sold yeah. some de deals with me. I mean, how many people are buying new devices? Probably not, right? 
Yeah, not many, unless they're like legacy, like, you know, the accounting firms and law firms, they always love their devices. But for the most part, yeah. you know, we're seeing everybody going to the headsets, right? Or they're buying a microphone or something, you know, wearing their AirPods, going about yeah. it that way because they're just used to it. You know, and it's just exactly. an easier, easier way to go. No one wants that big thing on their desk. And it's just, I was going to say, you brought, you know, bringing that up is that this Chromebook is just like the next evolution. It feels in this, you know, in the personal workspace of an, of an employee, right? Where you have yeah. this device that can easily be wiped clean. It's very, you know, there's nothing, all the data is in the cloud, right? And so exactly. there's, a lot, there's less risk involved with it. Like you said earlier, when we talked about leaving it, you know, losing it at the airport or someone stealing something, it's a, at that point, it's just, you know, it's just a virtual machine that logs in. And like you said, it's Citrix and things like that getting involved is a, is a huge a huge win for, for Google and making it work. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you're from a channel perspective, you're, you're losing that hardware revenue, but also these larger complex deployment issues that you run into, you know, deploying soft phones or, you know, browser plugins or Chrome plugins on, you know, for a CC or UC implementation on legacy windows or Mac devices, um, trust me, you know, I've, I've been part of the sales process. You, you know, everything goes great during the sales process, customers all excited. And then you go to professional services and implementation and you're deploying a contact center solution or UC solution across multiple disparate devices. You know, mm -hmm. some, some folks have windows, somehow folks have Mac devices. You run into these, these issues. Whereas, you know, the, the Chrome devices, they deploy 76% faster than these windows devices. These Chromebooks are optimized for these Chrome Enterprise recommended solutions like Vonage, Ring Central, 8x8, 5.9, Genesis, Edify. Um, so they'll deploy faster, and deploying faster realizes that revenue faster for the channel. You know, instead of waiting six months, eight months to deal with bugs and you know with the context center deployment, you can deploy it relatively fast using the Chromebook. And then on the flip side, uh, my team. You know, you know, my organization, the, the channel partner organization, you know, the incentives that I'm building are spiffs around uh, selling Chromebooks and Chromebook Enterprise, which Chromebook Enterprise is the Chromebook device tied to the Chrome, uh, Chrome Enterprise license, the management license, mm -hmm. um, figuring out spiffs, one time spiffs and incentive programs for the channel to prayer, pair Chromebooks and Chromebook Enterprise with these contact center and you see deals that they're working on. Um, so there's, there's going to be a lot of reasons why from a financial perspective, yep. but also from a customer, um, experience perspective as well. Yeah. So I mean, I just imagine uh, a workforce, yeah. uh, a young workforce that's maturing out of college where college today isn't like a backpack full of textbooks. Now it's a backpack with a Chromebook in it and you, you, you know, skateboard your class, sit down and pull out your Chromebook. You, you might not even go to class. You might just do it from home and, and listen to the lecture at home. And then we, we hire those people out of college for a contact center and imagine bringing them to an environment where we tether them to a desk. We have an old uh, laptop or computer that they're like, wait, what? What is this old thing? And I have to use this physical phone with a physical headset jack and no Bluetooth, no I can't just like have everything on my phone or, or use my laptop that I have in my backpack from school. It's just, yep. it just doesn't make any sense. So um, being able to enable contact centers to have the most current technology, have a tool set that they, you know, that they could deploy to, to team members where it's not going to be a huge learning curve. Like, what do you mean? I have to pick up the receiver to answer the call, things like that. Um, I think the question I have for you guys is, so I, I'm a, let's say I'm a contact center. I've got 50 seats. I've got 50 people. Um, I need to refresh all my stuff. I, I'm deciding to go with Google. I'm going to do Chromebook, Chrome OS. Do I just go out to like Best Buy and just go buy a bunch? Like what? Do, what's the next step? Like who do I talk to? I mean, I think I know the answer, but I just want to let you guys talk to it. Saj. You talk to Saj. <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there are a lot of ways um, to get started with the Chromebook. I mean, one option that you mentioned is you can go to a Best Buy and, and grab those devices and, and just log in and get to work. Uh, but if you're if you're going to go at a little bit more scale, you know, hop in with one of our partners that, that we work with, uh, you know, Jimmy Rattle up a whole bunch. Um, they'll get you, you know, familiar with a POC with, you know, with Chrome OS, you know, migrating your, your solution that you're using now and getting started with Chromebooks. 
vet it out. I'm pretty confident and within a couple of days, you can run a POC and, and get and, and off you go. Uh, but the, the line share is also like, you know, what is it, understanding your security posture? Like what, what you may have done a year ago, two years ago, um, is it the same now, right? Do you want to enforce updates? Do you not want to enforce updates? You know, do you want to do different applications? Do you want to migrate to the newer version of the OS? So there's a lot of cool things that these partners, our partners can help you get started with. Yeah, what kind of applications you're running, everything like that. And when I'm a channel partner out there in front of a customer, we used to always ask that question, you know, what kind of phones do you have on your desk, right? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have Polycom phones or, you know, if you're an on-prem, you know, a uh, customer, I mean, does your, does your uh, receptionist have that console with all the different sidecars and everything yes. like that? Or <laughs> does the CEO have an executive phone, whatever the heck that means, right? Um, yeah. So today you know, with the, the phone devices kind of going on the wayside um, and everybody going opting for a poly headset or a jobber headset or, or whatever you want uh, hooked up to the computer, I think the channel really needs to start asking, all right, you're deploying a new contact center, you're deploying a new UC solution. What operating system, you know, are you deploying on? What kind of devices are you deploying this on? Because it, it matters and it matters that those devices are optimized for that contact center or UC solution. Um, so, you know, the, the channel partners that are more sophisticated, that understand that concept, um, will really gravitate, gravitate towards this program that I'm building. And it's, it's going to be highly incentivized. Um, and we're excited about it. So it's just, it's just a shift from the physical phone to the physical laptop or, or computer. Yeah, it makes complete sense. So we're looking forward to getting it out there, all the, all the masters that are out there. And, you know, getting this program program started, and like you said, like usually hardware, we don't make money on, you know, in our world, like when the polycom phones or whatever it is, like, it's not towards, we don't get incentivized to sell polycom or the headsets and things like that with, you know, whatever carrier it might be. So this would be a good, a good shift for the industry to see like, oh, like we can still make a little bit of money on the hardware side as well, you know, which is something we haven't been able to do all the time. Yeah, I don't, and, you know, I don't. I'd also add that it opens up the door for services on a Chromebook, right? Like there's another avenue of revenue here to deploy these things, build some custom solutions, uh, migrate from one platform to the other. Uh, it's a lot of opportunity, in my opinion. Sorry, Jimmy. Yeah, I um, no, I mean, to that end, I mean, there is, uh, you know, other things outside of just going with the Chromebook, right? That is optimized for the contact center, you know, this is just the first step or the first phase. The next thing is adding on features and functionality. You know, we were talking to our CCAI team, you know, the Google Cloud team, you know, CCAI, CCAI contact center AI um, team the other day about the you know, leveraging machine learning AI and fusing that into this type of, um, you know, scenario for contact center customers, looking at quality of service, mitigating, um, you know, latency jitter packet loss on Chromebooks, things like that, that are really be beneficial to, both the IT side as well as the contact center side. But the other thing that, you know, is really hot right now over the past year or two that I haven't really understood is folks talking about, oh, you know, Microsoft Teams, integrating with Microsoft Teams. Um, Bonnie sold it. And I think it's, it's a great, it was a good mm -hmm. differentiator and a good value pitch at the time. But Microsoft is a year or two away from having a really robust UC solution when it comes to Microsoft Teams and a, a great voice and contact center solution and pushing more people towards Microsoft and Microsoft Teams and yep. doing those integrations with 8x8 Ring Central Vonage is all well and good until Microsoft turns around to those customers and says, hey, we have a really robust solution now for UC and contact center. Why don't you unplug those that UC vendor or that contact center vendor and plug in our solution for half the cost. Um, you know, the churn there will be pretty devastating for those service providers as well as the channel uh, versus going with Google where we're just really looking to secure the endpoint. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we can do all, uh, some additional services like uh, Saj mentioned with Google Workspace and GCP and CCAI. But, you know, that's our focus is the endpoint and securing that and the operating system. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, with my, we're seeing that in a project right now with Microsoft and Dynamics and, you know, they're doing, they're going the way that Salesforce is right with their service cloud. And now Dynamics has their own service organization to manage a lot of contact center functionality, 
you know, they still haven't, you can still do the voice through dynamics and through teams, but it's, you know, people are still opting to go to that third party, right? Like a call tower Mm -hmm. NTT or one of the other integrators like Vonage, right? Because they're not quite there, but that's on their, that's where they're going. Right. And so being able to circle the wagons a little bit and figure out where's this market going to turn, where's it going to be in the next two, three, five years, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And then it's cool to see what you guys are doing just on the hardware play and how that's changing, right? With the desk phones going away and now it's all headsets and, and, you know, Chromebooks. Yeah. It's, it's weird to, you know, for the past 13, 14 years be selling, you know, software as a service, right. And now making the pivot to, to hardware, but, you know, the laptop, the, the desktop isn't going anywhere. And, you know, if you're going to be deploying a contact center solution, you really want to have the best type of you know, devices out there to deploy on um, so that you can rest easy as an IT person. And like you were talking about with the Microsoft piece and, and you know, all the different providers out there, there's a ton of um, consolidation in the space right now, too, right? I mean, look at the announcement today with 8x8 buying Fuse. Vonage, yeah, you know, what was it, a week ago or two weeks ago, got bought by Ericsson, which was a really surprising play. Yeah. Um, so you never know what's going to happen in the UC contact center space. Um, but, you know, the devices are going to be always be a focal point for a contact center, yeah. um, unless you're deploying it on your, your, your cell phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I feel like the, the Chromebook is just the avenue towards Chrome OS. So even though it is hardware, it's really, you're, you're selling cloud, you're selling totally. software. Um, the, the hardware is a necessary evil because you need a user interface to be able to interact with it. But in reality, it's just, you know, it's just a, a way to get to, to that. I think um, falling back a little bit on the, the phone situation. So I, Alex and I have hit our head against this a couple of times because we've got some mm-hmm. companies we consult and we've migrated them to the cloud and it always comes to the last, the last question they have is what do I do with my physical phones that I have? My Shortel phones, my Polycom, <laughs> whatever it is, because there's no need for it anymore because it's obsolete. Everything yep. goes through the, uh, through, through the computer, through, through Wi-Fi or whatever internet. So um, we, we had someone on earlier uh, in the podcast series um, from Headset Advisor, Cooper from Headset Advisor. Yep. They actually do yeah, trade in value. So you can trade in your physical polycom or desk phones for uh, credit towards Bluetooth headsets or USB headsets or whatever that's needed for, um, you know, so that they could use that with their Chromebook. So I think that barrier to entry is is going away, um, especially the, the IT person sitting on the back saying like, well, I only have X amount of dollars for a refresh every year and we're not even going to consider doing a refresh of to Chrome, uh, to Chrome OS or Chromebooks because um, we don't have a refresh in budget for the physical polycoms for another three years or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a way that we can navigate around those conversations and there are ways to, to get through that kind of challenge and that blocker that makes a lot of sense for the contact center. And I think having a tool set that you guys put together, not only the physical uh, hardware, uh, the Chromebooks, but also a Chrome OS behind it that has all of these apps that uh, work seamlessly with uh, cloud-based uh, contact center and, and UCAS providers. That's really the way to go so that, you know, when that IT professional comes around to a refresh again, another three, four or five years, they can just remove that line item because there's no, there's no polycoms anymore. There's no hard, hard phone. So I I think that's an important piece to what you guys are doing. And that's probably one of the biggest selling points that you guys have to non-contact center people to the IT professionals. So I just wanted to bring that up because that you guys sparked that when we were uh, chatting about that a little bit more. Totally. And that's, that's a good idea too, that the headset, headset advisors folks are doing. Um, so thanks for bringing that up already. You know, maybe we can, you know, work that into our sales pitch or, um, you know, I'll talk to you know, my boss about it. But the other thing that, you know, you mentioned there is, uh, which I'm happy that you brought it up is it's, it's a really a path to the operating system, you know, with the devices and we can with, I believe it's called cloud ready, right, Saj, be able to, Reprovision existing 
legacy devices like a like a Windows or Mac device and deploy Chrome OS on them, right? So as you don't need a Chromebook. No. Um, so with cloud ready, you can take in your existing hardware, literally tr- turn it into a, a Chromebook for a little while longer. Just to get, just get the you know yeah. see how get the flavor of it, get the feel of it. It does something really for me. Um, you know, and then at some point, if you like it, then you can come over to Chromebook and that'll work even better, right? You'll have a lot more controls. Um, I think that you'll get to see the TCO story. You kind of brought up the total cost of ownership. You, you'll kind of see it yeah. in, in full flash. Like, you know, I, I probably don't need a high end, you know, 128 gig hard drive, 128 gig hard drive with, you know, an insane amount of RAM. I can probably get away with an i5, 8 gig Chromebook um, and do the same exact thing. Maybe this is for me. So you can do that. That's free. You can you can go trial it right now. Um, mm-hmm. we, got, we got some pretty cool plans for it in the future, what we're going to do with it. But uh, it's a great option. And then you can, and like I said, we, we have all different forms and all different kinds of Chromebooks from, you know, from Celeron, Pentium, all the way up to i7s that are probably far more affordable than what a, a customer is using now. Uh, when, you, when you combine that with a headset conversation, right, it, it makes a lot of yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, in the. A- one of the questions that I was thinking about too is I wanted to find out like, where do you, where are you seeing like the roadblocks as far as, well, we have, we need it. We have, we're not in a position to do a refresh right now. Are you seeing companies doing refresh with laptops or desktops every two, three years, four or five years? Like where are you kind of seeing that to where it opens up the door a little bit easier for you guys to jump in? Well, it, it varies, you know, like a Chromebook, for example, we have this notion of uh, AUE, which is the updates expiration cycle. Uh, and every new Chromebook has about eight years of life cycle built into it, right? So to kind of answer your question, we're kind of seeing, or at least I'm seeing, you know, companies refresh about every five years now, right? It used to be three years, four years, five years seems to be the magic number, right? Because you want to get new hardware, uh, warranty support kind of expires at that point, and you kind of want to refresh at that area. And then um, some of the big names that I've seen come on a Chrome um, in the last, you know, 24 months or so um, have used, um, you know, COVID or the refresh as an ex- as a reason to try something different and just to see, like, hey, does this actually make sense? Does this use case, you know, Google's touting this is much more safer? Um, yeah, but the, it actually is, right? So we've seen exp- we've seen you know deployments go from you know, a couple hundred to a couple thousand pretty quickly once they try it. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, the the COVID helped. Change, change a lot of things in a good way, you know, despite the negative aspects of COVID, obviously. But, you know, I think the remote workers is a big one, being able to deploy, you know, for the contact center, these, you know, remote work from home and all that absolutely makes sense. And instead of buying a phone for them to take back, you're buying a Chromebook, all right, Chromebook and a headset, and then they're off, off and running. But you guys, you guys are definitely on the right path. I love that you're hitting into the channel. Obviously, we're biased towards the channel because we're in it, but <laughs> we love it. And I think having Google there, you know, just speaks highly of what's going on in the channel and the viability that it has for getting services and products out to clients. But you guys, thank you so much for jumping on this podcast and taking the time sure. with us to explain what you guys are doing. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Artie. Always a pleasure. Good yeah. seeing you guys again. All right, for having us. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Thanks, everyone. See y'all. Well, that wraps up the show for today. Thanks for joining. And don't forget to join us next week as we bring another guest in to talk about the trends around Cloud Contact Center and customer experience. Also, you can find us at AdlerAdvisors.com, LinkedIn, or your favorite podcast platform. We'll see you next week on another Cloud Podcast.